Well, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to Fort Leavenworth's uh, Town Hall for October. Uh, my name is John Meisenheimer, the Garrison Commander, and on behalf of Command Sergeant Major Erica Ryan Russell, Mr. Johnny Beavers, which is the deputy, um, we are very excited that you join us tonight and welcome, and we look forward to uh, sharing with you all some updates that we have going on uh, currently, and then also some things that we have on the horizon. Uh, we're going to we have a, a great support staff here from across the entire um, post, not just uh, Garrison, but uh, we've got uh, tenant leaders here. Uh, specifically, we've got uh, Colonel Shane Mendenhall from Munson, uh, and then we have reps uh, across from some other organizations that are here tonight to help answer any questions and also uh, put out some great information and provide any feedback or questions you may have. So at this time, before uh, we get started on the I've got a couple topics I want to lead off with. I'd like to ask, uh, and this is totally uh, unexpected, but Mr. Bill Wall, would you be willing to come up front here? Woo! I know I'm going to pay for this dearly. I can already see it in my Bill's uh, eyes, but uh, I just want to brag on one of our uh, professional leaders here uh, tonight a little bit. So we normally don't do this in the town hall. We normally do this in our internal garrison events, like our all hands and town halls and things like that. Um, last town hall that we did live, though, we did recognize some public uh, service uh, from um, from the Girl Scouts troop here. Um, but to, but this is I, I want to take this moment though to recognize Bill in this forum because he is such a huge influence uh, and um, you know a mission multiplier, right? Um, for this community. Um, so, uh, if Bill is the director for our public works on post, and um, he just received an award from the Installation Management Command, which has close to 100 installations or garrisons worldwide, right? From here, Conus to Oconus, you name it, right? There's a, there is an Army installation pretty much out there everywhere. And so, they put all of the directors of the DPWs into um, to this competition, and he won uh, for the, it's called the 2020 William C. Gribble Jr. DPW Executive of the Year. So it's also referred to as like the top DPD, uh, excuse me, DPW Director Worldwide. So Bill, congratulations. Uh, thank you very much for all that of your, your tireless efforts, tremendous leadership um, that you've taken on uh, in, in your you know many, many years of service here. Um, you know, I know you served in uniform and then you served here as our as our DPW, as our lead engineer. He's not only the director for Public Works, but he is a no kidding modified engineer. So um, the, the fact that you've devoted uh, this lifelong service and then just the excellent leadership that you provided, it, it's really brought success not only to the garrison, but to the CAC, uh, to all the tenant units. You've kept our lights on. You know, you've kept, I, I'm serious, right? Well, most of the time, you know, right? but the only time you turned them off was so that we could do exercises to make sure that we are uh, resilient, right? So, and no, I'm just kidding. Mother Nature has a vote. But uh, certainly, I mean, when, when it comes to, for all of you out there that don't really understand maybe what Public Works does, if you look at like a city, uh, Public Works, I mean, it goes from utilities to uh, e they even, uh, they maintain all the barracks, all the, Public working places, the common areas here on post, um, you know, responsible for roads and grounds and maintenance, uh, for all the contracts that we have for those utility service providers. The list goes on and on. Environmental, right? Housing oversight. Uh, it just there, there's a lot of stuff that you and your team touch. So again, congratulations. Thank you for a lot you do, and just want to recognize you. <laughs> so, um, just a couple, or not a couple, a few t uh, topics that I'd like to just first start out with tonight before we get into the, um, the informational, uh, and I pass the mic as well uh, to the other tenant leaders. So first is, you know, we are encroaching upon winter weather, right? So I mean, we've already got a taste of it this week, and it's supposed to warm back up this weekend. So um, we think it's, um, you know, pertinent just to go ahead and talk a little bit about how closures and delays work here um, on Fort Leavenworth if you're new. So um, first off, notifications and alerts. And I mentioned this during the last month's update, I believe, but just uh, if you are not um, re 
registered yet, you and your family is not registered on the Mass Alert system, please make sure that you do so, right? And so that, that allows you to put your emails, your text, uh, your, your cell phone numbers, and, and then you can do text notification, phone notification, and email notification uh, for an event such as an, any kind of emergency event, whether it be uh, winter weather, maybe our power goes out, or you know, wor even worse, uh, some kind of tornadic activity throughout the, the, those types of uh, seasons. Uh, to road closures, and specifically, that's what we'll kind of hinge on tonight, right, is when, we, when those temperatures drop down and we get to start getting precipitation that affects the community, whether it's not only our work members here on, on Fort Leavenworth, but the families, and specifically USD 207 that, that uh, educate our children, right? And so we just want to make sure that everyone is accessible and we can get that, not that notification out uh, effectively. It, it also is tied, up, tied into our big giant boys uh, that we test every Wednesdays at 11 a.m. as well. So um, just wanted to at least remind everybody of that. Uh, and, and we also post everything on the, the website as well, or the, as well as Facebook. Um, let's talk about snow removal real quick. So um, two efforts are, that are ongoing during snow removal. So for the housing areas, uh, Frontier Army Housing uh, takes that responsibility on for all of those roads and those sidewalks that are in the housing areas. And so uh, their contractor landscaping is, is uh, Wallace Landscaping. And so they're responsible, you know, so their contract I believe is written about where if, if you start getting accumulation of like two inches of snow, that's when they really start getting hot and heavy. But I will tell you that last year, they usually try to look at the conditions, right? And they look at the forecast too. So it's dependent upon that. So if they start seeing that there's a blizzard coming in, right? And they really kind of take cues off of our BPW staff as well. They work in tandem and they communicate and then uh, they knock out and, and take care of clearing those roads and sidewalks and housing areas. For all other areas across post, uh, DPW uh, under Mr. Wall, they, their uh, team gets out there and then they just they'll work, you know, day and night to ensure that our roads are, are clear, are, and to include the parking lots, right? So some of the priorities that you'll see, like Munson's one of those priorities, right? Because they know that we need that medical care, AFI's commissary, you know, they, they really focus on those areas and they look uh, too at the parking lots for the work areas. So it may be that, you know, we have an alert, we have a closure, they get busy, hot and heavy on the roads during the day, and everybody's like, well, hmm, the, the roads look really good, but it could be that the parking lots haven't been addressed yet, right? Or that that freezing temperature is going to come drop right back down, and there's some safety concerns. So just know um, we have two efforts. They really work together. They, it works great, and uh, I, I have full confidence that, that uh, snow removal will go well this year. Um, the USD 207, I mentioned it. I don't think we have a rep for USD 207 here this evening, but just wanted to remind you, so they may actually close school. They don't really do delays. They do closures, right? And the reason is is because if you think about it, every uh, school on our post, we have three elementary schools, we have one junior high, and they are technically all within work walking distance, even though despite we have some bus routes that they execute. But in reality, by law, Every kid could walk to school on, on our uh, post. And so they have to take into effect or take into account the kids standing out there in these freezing temperatures. So if it reaches a certain temperature, I can't recall that exact temperature, they will they'll look at closing those schools. And it may be that we don't have pre precipitation pending. You know, it could just be that the severe cold weather. So keep that in mind. And I do believe the Farmer's Almanac is, unfortunately, it's uh, predicting a pretty rough cold winter. So we may see that more often than not. Um, any questions on the snow removal before I move on? Okay, thank you. Um, just a quick reminder, and really I'll defer to, to Frontier Housing, to, to Arlene tonight, because I know she's going to speak. But just know um, this tis the season of cold weather means more maintenance and work order requests, right? So just take that into consideration. Uh, appreciate your patience. I know they're all over it. They're already addressing you know, heating and, and uh, switching over. They've already done that for infantry barracks. They've done it to some of the, uh, the individual homes as well that require that, some of the historic homes. But uh, just know that they are on top of that. They'll put priority to, um, to heating uh, failures and things of that nature. Um, and then also I want to just touch on the leaf 
uh, I, I jumped the snow, but really I should have probably talked about leaf removal or collection uh, as well first. And just know that's also a concerted effort. Uh, we've got DPW working on the main post, uh, and then we have um, Michael's Military Housing or, or Frontier Housing's contractor, Wallace Landscaping, that does the leaf uh, collection. And they've already started, right? So technically the leaves haven't fallen off in mass, but they're trying to get ahead of it. So you may see them out. You probably saw them out this past week. I know that I did. Um, just know it's going to get dusty, right? So when that happens, just I recommend if you are sensitive and you have allergies, just take that into consideration. There's going to be dust in the air in the neighborhoods. It's going to fall on your cars. It's going to fall on, on your sidewalks and on your porches. Just be prepared. But that's just all part of the process so that we can get those leaves up so that we don't have them laying dormant uh, throughout the winter. Um, and again, they're going to do a really good job and, and stay on top of that as well as our DPW team. Um, any questions on maintenance or leaf removal slash collection? Okay, and the last thing I have before I turn over the mic is, uh, or before I, I talk about a few announcements, I apologize, is fall cleanup, right? So we do this annually across the entire installation. It's a concerted effort, uh, not only with Garrison, but amongst every tenant unit. It's a, it's a chance to beautify like we do spring cleanup. Uh, that'll start one uh, November, go through the 18th. Um, and in conjunction with that, our housing partner, Frontier uh, Army Housing, they, they do the same thing, right, for our villages. Uh, and so it's, a, it's voluntary, uh, really, and it's dependent upon the village mayors, which we met this morning at the mayor's meeting. And it's to, to collectively just uh, work on area beautification for each of the villages. And the designated week for that is the 14th through the 18th. I know Frontier Army Housing has... Uh, committed to providing uh, plastic bags for that, uh, and so all you have to do, and I know I don't want to be still in your thunder, Arlene, but she'll probably talk about that, right, the availability of that. Um, but again, it's just a, it's an opportunity. I know that Wallace has that contract for just general mowing and cleanup and snow removal, but it, it has the, you know, it gives you the ability to take that a step further on the personal level to beautify your yards, to kind of get ready for that winter season. Uh, you know, folks have fences. Many, many of the houses here have fenced-in backyards, so it gives the opportunity to do that maintenance. Maybe they just haven't had time to do uh, when it's been warm and uh, or, or throughout the summer. And then it also allows us with these Kansas winds that we have, 30 and 40 miles an hour, it blows trash everywhere. It doesn't matter how well you you secure your trash, it's you're going to have trash in your neighborhood. So it gives you the opportunity to do a little bit of a police call as well. So appreciate your efforts. Your village mayors will be reaching out to you shortly. Um, I'll tell you what, before I go into the announcements and, and the events with Sergeant Major, let me pause there real quick. I'd like to at this time pass the mic uh, to our uh, additional uh, teammates here, attendant units on post, and see if you all have some uh, announcements to make. Um, Anyone? Okay, I'll pass it to Arlene this time. Oh, good evening. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name's Arlene Ozores. I'm the Community Director of Frontier Heritage Communities. And um, Colonel, thank you for bringing up the fall cleanup and uh, the winds. It does get uh, pretty windy and uh, putting out <coughs> trash and recycling prior to your, your pickup day can um, affect your areas and in wanting to keep our areas beautiful, of course, um, being mindful of that, not putting out the trash and recycling prior to uh, 8 o'clock the night before. And sometimes, depending on what the weather is going to be, maybe um, holding out until first thing in the morning um, just so that uh, critters like raccoons um, aren't getting in. Um, recycling bins are very light, um, especially with you know the empty containers in them, so those flip over easily and you'll see those all through the villages. Um, with the bags, um, we can um, work out the plan with the mayors where they see that these are going to be needed more so that we can have those available and ready during the cleanup dates. So um, I would like to see some of my staff out there and assisting with cleanup as well. Um, so hope to, uh, to see that and, and look forward to those dates. Um, we have a, uh, as the cold weather is coming up, a reminder, disconnect your hoses. Um, you don't want those uh, freezing up and then those that have basements causing water um, to, to flood into the basement. Um, so with those cold weather reminders, um, you, we are going to have an increase in work orders as well. Please, if you have an urgent or an emergency item, make sure that you're speaking to a live person. Um, don't leave a voicemail. 
please do not put it in through active building. Additionally, when putting in work orders, please don't fudge what it is. Um, it may be an emergency for you, um, and we would definitely like to, to take care of that, but unless it's a true urgent or emergency item, you're actually hindering other um, residents from receiving um, you know, the attention or not having heat, water, whatever the case of the true emergency or urgent item is. So please be mindful of that. Um, let's see, that's great with the closures and delays because I, I need to check my staff emails and phone numbers, so thanks for that, Colonel. And um, we also have a referral program going on that I want to touch base. So living on the post, it's a great opportunity, of course. Having lived on post as a, as a brat and as a spouse, love that opportunity um, to be able to be part of the community. And you too now have the opportunity to pick who your neighbors are. So we have a refer friend program. It's a $250 referral. Um, those that live on post, your name has to be on the application, and the person has to move in within 45 days of application. But once they've signed their lease agreement, you can get $250 for that neighbor that you've chosen. Can you think of anything else? All right, Colonel, am I missing anything? No way. Right. Thank you for your time. Yes. Is there a limit? Like, could I refer five people or ten people? Or <laughs> there, there is a limit. Um, but if you pace yourself and your friends are moving in, you know, periodically, it would be fine. But we, we can definitely talk offline. And, you know. Get the roster for next year's class. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, I'm glad that you asked that though. So the two hundred. Uh, referral is going to be for those who are moving from off post on within a 50 mile radius it is current now definitely not going to be available during the summer but good try sir I like the, the ambition there um, appreciate that but you do too ma'am so, did you have any other questions about that? all right thank you thank you all right uh, do we have any other service providers in the room that have any announcements um, that they would like to make Sure yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm uh, John Sprecher, EFMP coordinator up at Munson. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the OCONA screening process. If anyone PCS know overseas, a uh, couple points. The main question I'm getting right now is what can I do to prepare for an overseas move? And the biggest things I got to tell people are check your EFMP status, or if you have a question about EFMP, come talk to come talk to me now. I'm on the second floor in Munson. I got a number, 684-6770. People can call to come and talk to me, see if there's anything we need to do now before the RFOs start coming out. Um, second thing is check if physicals are current. And if families don't know, I can check that, tell them what they need to do. If they're off post, I can tell them what they need to do to get those records to me. Uh, third thing, if there's any medical referrals, we need those referrals complete, or we need notes on what the treatment plan is, not a closed referral. There was a reason a medical provider put in a referral. There's a we have to find out what that was for. Um, and then fourth is once the RFO is received for that Oklahoma location, there's a new process with the enterprise EFMP. The service member just looks that up. They submit their request. It goes over to MPD for signature and review. Then it comes to me. And then we do all the other checks. And then it goes to the overseas assignment for review. Um, it's a new system. There's a lot of bugs. That's why I, I'm trying to get the word out early. Um, I will be briefing CGSC next week, and we're going to put out a Facebook Live video on the Munson Facebook page as well. Should be out next week as well. Any questions? Thanks, sir. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. All right. One more. On this call. Some of the, yeah, some of this stuff will just be a reiteration from this morning. So, uh, pharmacy, so our drive-up pharmacy closes um, on the on the 21st. Will be at the last day that will be open, and then on the 24th, we're completely closed on that. So there is uh, window seven that's open, and that's for refills, and then uh, some over-the-counter medications, etc. Um, and then all the other the, the ways that uh, we. We provide uh, prescriptions to the beneficiaries, so they can walk up, just have an ID card, and, and get their get their stuff. That's one based on occupational health for the folks that are running in and out of uh, the facility. And then, you know, I don't want DES showing up that uh, we got folks slipping under cards and all kinds of stuff like that. So the other piece is that if there's a change in our prescriptions, 
they, the folks are, that are getting those prescriptions can actually have a, have a conversation with uh, a provider or actually with the pharmacist to, to kind of go over those changes in their prescriptions, et cetera. Um, the other piece is, and this is one that I've got to push out the CGSC and then also our, our uh, permanent party. So we found, um, a, I don't want to call it a loophole, but we found the right regulatory guidance so that we can do um, uh, term hiring for LPNs, RNs, and then uh, some other uh, care provider specialties that primarily that we're finding are, are, resi are residing within the CGSC population. Um, and because they're here for such a short time, it's very difficult to get them through the GS system. So we found a, a way to kind of uh, bring those uh, providers into our facility on a term uh, employment hiring uh, activity. So we'll, we'll send out an email and then we'll put a, a few other announcements out on our website that will allow for, um, for that employment to happen. The way I'm looking at it is it's a win for our community. It's a win for Munson, but it's also a huge win for uh, those folks that um, have a difficult time negotiating through the Department of Defense GS system. Um, so once they kind of get into that term system, they can go to their next duty station and then get on a regular uh, schedule of uh, either GS employment or at this point, if they're a provider, it'll be a DOD employment. So, um, so we've kind of found that piece. I'm also working, I've got to reach out to uh, uh, the Navy and to the Air Force to kind of find out their HRC or their Human Resources Command equivalent. But right now I'm working with the Army HRC to find a way to notify inbound students so that they can share that information across, across their, you know, those folks that know they're coming here and then they can, we can start them early so we can actually have a great nurse or LPN for 10 months instead of, you know, four months or whatever it may be. Um, Couple of closure dates, um, just kind of so you're tracking our activities. So the 28th, we've got trunk or treat. Um, I think there's a whole bunch of trunk or treats that you'll probably announce. So we've got one of those. It's going to be out in the, uh, in the parking lot area. There will be games and all kinds of different stuff. Uh, you know, shout out to MWR. They're helping us out. We've got uh, a lot of educational stuff. Uh, you know, just other things that are going on so that that's an opportunity so it's five to seven uh, on the 28th of uh, October and then uh, on the 31st uh, we'll be closed just from 1130 to 1 and that's for all of our staff to uh, have a, a costume parade I guess it is so a little morale builder there they actually really really enjoy that I was kind of pushed in the corner to make that happen so which is great it'll be exciting to see what happens um, and then for the Thanksgiving time period, so 24 through 25, uh, Munson will be closed. So on Thanksgiving it will be closed and then on that Friday will be closed as well. So um, really that's just for planning purposes so that folks can kind of get out there. We'll be right back open on Monday, um, but just that four day period, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday will be closed uh, for folks to enjoy that or get a little time away. Um, as things have opened up after the last two years, there's, there's a good, good reason for that and it will give a, an opportunity back to some of the great civilians that are working there. So, um, is there any questions for, for Munson or for me? No. Okay. Really? That's easy. All right. Nothing too scary, right? So, on the EFMP, I just want to hit some of that, right? So, um, what I, if, I, if I dig into it, um, and, and I did this in Hawaii, what I'm finding for the most part with that and as we communicate, it's um, after about seven to ten days, I, I need to know. Like the commander of the hospital needs to know. So if you have soldiers or civilians, I need to know. Because that usually means it's stuck on some desk, either at Tripler, uh, Brian D. Allgood Hospital in Korea, Launch School in Europe, or some other crazy place that I just need to make a phone call to a commander and we can make some stuff happen. Um, or, or the other piece is, is the, the young captain, major, sergeant first class didn't communicate early and often enough with the EFMP and then we've got to kind of run through some hoops. But EFMP for me is a hot button item because of a whole lot of, the, of stuff. But 
it's really important that we help that family meet success and meet that amazing assignment that they're trying to get to. So if it, if it hits seven to 10 days and you're not getting any in action or input, and then that's something the EFMB coordinator and I will work very closely with the officer or the soldier. So um, again, thank you. And other than that, that's all I got. So thanks. Thank you. I appreciate it, Thank you. And yeah, so he hit the nail on the head. So we've got a lot of events coming up over the next few weeks. And so uh, at this time, Sergeant Major and I, we're going to kind of tag team. I'll start us off real quick, but we'll try to run down a list of events that may not be in true chronological order because I'm going to miss a few. But uh, I just we, we just want to make sure that you know, the community has a good, um, extensive list of things to do if you have some spare time over the next couple weeks. And um, also, this stuff is posted, right? So. You, not only are we talking about it, this is recorded, so you can look at Facebook again, but we're also going to, uh, there will be a lot of flyers, flyers, excuse me, and things that, and on what, the web page to, uh, to, to share, you know, through social media. So, uh, first off, we are in the Frontier Conference Center right now, and on every Tuesday and every Friday, downstairs in the solarium, we are bringing back, I should say the MWR is bringing back the buffet, right? So I know there's probably a virtual applause that's going to happen when uh, people see this recording on Facebook. This is in high demand because of the reputation of this buffet. I'm just going to tell you right now, you've got to at least try it a hundred or so times while you're here. Okay? Um, no, but all kidding aside, it is it's really good food. I, I have not had a chance, uh, I've sampled some of the items that are going to be on it, but I haven't truly eaten there yet. It just started this Tuesday with the, the main dish is the carved uh, roast, I believe. And then every Friday, it's going to be shrimp. So is it fried or? Yes. Right. Butterfly. Butterfly, yes. yes. And, and yes, I already have folks here <laughs> saying it is delicious. So um, can't wait to try it this Friday myself. But please, it's $14.95, okay? Uh, it's all you can eat. And uh, you can bring your spouse, your, your dependents, your family members. Uh, but that goes at from 11.30 to, is it 1 or 1.30? 11 to 1.30. 11, 11 to 1.30. So that's uh, every Tuesday and Friday. Then this Friday, a free event at our movie theater. So we're doing that. Uh, we, we started that a couple months ago for every other Friday. Uh, the movie is Thor Ragnarok. Uh, it's going to be at 7 p.m. And it's in the uh, post-movie theater. Please dress up as your favorite Marvel character, okay? And that is not including, that's, that's not only kids, that's including adults as well, family. Please, you're encouraged to, uh, to dress up and have some fun. Um, the installation retirement ceremony is going to be on the 27th of October at 9 a.m. That's here in the Frontier Conference Center in the main ballroom. Uh, we have 19 retirees as of right now, so it should be a great event. We've got Colonel Promotable uh, Woodward, which is actually going to officiate and uh, host the ceremony. Um, we have the AFES Trunk or Treat. Uh, this is one, just one of three, I think, that I know that are going on on the 28th from 5 to 7 in the PX parking lot. There, as uh, Colonel Mendenhall mentioned, you also have the Munson one going on, as well as uh, there's one off post, I believe, uh, which I think Sergeant Major may have the details on that. Um, and it, I think it's a two day event. We also, the very next morning, we have the Retiree Appreciation Day on 29 October from 9 to 1 o'clock. Uh, the main uh, opening starts at Lewis and Clark Center. I have a flyer on that and it's, it's on social media as well. Uh, and it's going to, to be to take care of all of our retirees. It's an appreciation day across post. So you'll get a brief uh, welcome in Lewis and Clark, uh, followed by some services from Munson, uh, followed by uh, AFI's commissary, uh, taking care of our retirees, followed by the ID car facility which is going to be taking care of deers updates and ID cards and things like that, dependent ID cards. So a great event for our retirees. There was also a competition that USD 207 did, started it last year, their inaugural uh, competition from students. They did kindergarten through second and third through fifth grade. Um, they submitted the coloring or, or drawing contest. They were selected today and those will also be announced. But uh, this art will be displayed at the APS PX uh, in the atrium as you walk in, and you all see the talent, right? And it's these kids pouring their heart to thank our veterans, our retirees, uh, for all that they do. 
and all that they did, right? So great event. Even if you're not a retiree, I ask to encourage you to come out, at least maybe in the commissary Athey's area. And you can also thank them by just shaking their hand, giving them a fist bump and so forth. So great event. Then you have that same morning, there's the run, there's a 5K going on out at the USDB, I believe. Is that the one, Sergeant Major? Great uh, Escape. Great Escape, thank you. And so that'll be that morning too, I think kickoff's at 8. Yes, and then that afternoon, starting at 2, we're going to have an amazing fall festival, right? So this is installation wide, it's over at Pioneer Chapel. Um, it's free food. Um, it's going to be probably a thousand people there, uh, right? So last year we had well over 600. Uh, if the word gets out, I think we'll have more. I think we have nice weather, it's supposed to be up in the 80s this weekend. Uh, we have all kinds of things for the kids and adult entertainment to include um, Deja, and I, I, her last name escapes me. Renault. 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 Deja Renault, okay, she's gonna be singing the national anthem for the veterans, uh, or excuse me, the retirees in the morning. Then she's going to come and sing during the uh, fall festival event. She's currently on The Voice uh, competing on uh, Team Gwen. Team Gwen. Thank you. So uh, great event. That's just one, one special item. But just come out, bull riding, uh, you name it, music, free food. Um, then, let's see, on post trick or treating. We've got that the following Monday, so that's Halloween. Um, that'll be going on from 6 to 8. There's a flyer that's posted out there. Just a reminder about safety, right, and, and curfews and supervision. Please, if you're driving, watch out for children that are crossing the road and, and out there on the sidewalks. Um, if you're a parent and your child is out there trick-or-treating, just remember the rules uh, that we have on the installation for supervising your children, right, and just making sure they're safe. Um, you know, if, if your kid's four or five, they're, they're likely not going to be looking out for vehicles, right? So we have to make sure that we got positive control of them so that we can ensure they're not running out in the road and in traffic. So, uh, and then just curfews wise, uh, you know, remember that if they are 15 and under, excuse me, is it 15 and under? 15 and under, it's 10.30 p.m. And then those that are older children, is it under 18? It's 16, 17, sir, it's uh, 0030. Thank you. Uh, 16 and 17 year olds is 0030 or 12.30 a.m. For 1 November, we've got a career and education fair that's at the Frontier Conference Center again. We've been doing these things quarterly now for several years. Uh, and if you're looking for a job, if you're a spouse or you're um, going to be retiring or ETSing soon out of the military, it's really a great opportunity. We have usually over 100 vendors. That's not just local vendors from Kansas City metro area. That's nationwide that are looking for eager and talented uh, you know, individuals that are looking for jobs. So please take advantage of that, even if you're thinking about retirement, right? You're not, you haven't uh, solidified that. If you're 18, 20 months out, come on anyways, start talking. And it's not only just uh, vendors, but there's also organizations there that are there for you to, to learn, that they're educators, they help you with resumes, just like our transition assistance office does. And, uh, and helps you connect the dots. So please take advantage of that. That's from 10 to 2 on 1 November. The Veterans Day Parade is from, uh, it starts at 10.30 on 11 November. That's downtown Leavenworth. A great event. We'll have a, a huge formation uh, led by General Beagle and Commissioner of Major Helton. Uh, it, it, I promise, uh, like last year, it, it ought to be a great event when uh, there's, there's tons of marching bands out there, community organizations. Um, so please come out and support that. Then the holiday tree lighting is December 2nd. That's uh, here in our Zeiss Park on the north end of uh, the housing area on Main Post. Uh, the, food, the food and the fun starts at 4 p.m. We'll have a, the uh, 312th Army Reserve Band that'll be uh, doing playing Christmas carols. There'll be a, a horse uh, carriage out there giving rides. Uh, and then there'll be some food and, and some hot beverages and things like that. So a great event. And then uh, the DES holiday, our director for uh, emergency services, will do a holiday parade um, full of fire and police law enforcement vehicles on December 16th. That afternoon, we'll, uh, we'll announce the, the kickoff time, but they will go through all of the housing villages and pretty much not leave any kid unturned to get a chance to hear a siren, 
uh, a flashing light to get to see Sparky, right, which is the uh, fire department's mascot. Huge dog that is just super friendly, uh, as well as Santa Claus I heard was coming this year, just like last year. Maybe Frosty the Snowman. And I think there might be one more Christmas or holiday celebrity that's going to show up too. So maybe an elf. Who knows, right? So you just you keep your eyes and ears, excuse me, your eyes and your ears peeled because it's going to be a great parade. Um, I think that's all that I have at this time. I will turn it over to Command Sergeant Major Ryan Russell, and she has some additional announcements. Thank you. Oh. I'm going to try my best not to repeat what you've already heard for the essence of time and just repetition for the most part. So I'm going to start with the um, Fort Leavenworth Haunted Tour. So we got that happening this week, 21st and 22nd from 5.30 to 10 p.m. The tours will start. I think they run roughly about two hours and they are walking tours. The meetup location is the ODB. Tickets are on sale. You can go to the museum website or you can go over to the actual museum to see what slots are still available. And then if I can jump from post to our Leavenworth community, they got a lot of great things going on too for uh, Halloween. The trunk or treat for them is at Sportsman Field Recreation Complex. It's Saturday on the 22nd from 5 to 7. And then if you're not trunk or treated out by then, there's another trunk or treat at the Kansas City, um, Kansas Community College. Um, for the kids, and they also have a small carnival at that event as well. And then, if you like mysteries, in Leavenworth, we would have to have the uh, murder mystery dinner, Young Dead Frankenstein, at Holyfield Vineyard and Winery. That's going to be on Friday, October 21st, from 7 to 9 p.m. And if you can't make Friday, don't worry about it. They'll also do it on Saturday at the same time, 7 to 9 p.m. So that's local. Trying to keep it in order a little bit here. On the 29th of October, we have the Halloween Fun Run also that day. A lot of great things happening. And 5K for our kids. Um, the, I do believe, a trunk or treat for that too. And they also have an opportunity to go into the uh, candy. Is it a candy reward for all of those who finish, sir? Yep, I think it is. I'm going to say Sorry, Major said that all kids 12 and under will be allowed to go into the little candy area. And, and Grab some handfuls of snacks. On the 29th of October, we have Trails of Terror Chili Golf Ground What starting at 10. Don't forget about the farmers market. It's near the end. I do believe I think they're gonna go to the first Saturday of November, but we've got the farmers market still at Haymarket Square from 8 to 12. If you decide you want to leave the Leavenworth area again on the 29th and 30th, we got Boo at the Kansas City Zoo. It starts from 9:30 a.m. to 4 p.m. One November, we want to highlight our education and career fair here at the FCC. Three November, we also want to highlight the installation newcomers orientation that will also be here at the FCC. Four November, the Buffalo Soldier Memorial Golf Tournament, 0800. Eight November is midterm elections. Twelve November, Western Open House and Tree Lighting, that will be from 5.30 to 7 p.m. 24 November is Thanksgiving um, holiday and Plaza Lights at the Kansas City Plaza from 6.30 to 8 p.m. and once again we close. On the 25th of November we have a training holiday for the military soldiers and once again we close. <laughs> and on the 4th of December we got Disney Princess on Ice concert for all of those who have little ones who love the Disney Princess concerts. And that will be at the Concert Harvest Bank Theater at 2 p.m. That will close out my update of coming events this time. Thank you. All right. Um, so at this time, um, I just real quick before we go into the Q&A, uh, just remind everyone to please, really there's, the only rule is just the, the golden rule, right? So it's uh, just be uh, cognizant and courteous to others. Just remember we're all here to, as we, as we ask questions or answer questions, we're all here for the same purpose, and that's to to better um, the comment here on uh, the best hometown in the Army, right, here at Fort Leavenworth, and, and you know, create a better, more approachable service environment. And so uh, with that, I'll just uh, stop talking and I'll look to the audience. If you would like to ask a question, I can just pass the mic. That way we can get it on the recorded audio.
sorry I had a problem. <laughs> As the Colonel was mentioning with uh, Halloween coming up and trick-or-treating, please be uh, mindful if you're dressing up your pet and taking your pet out with you that there is a leash um, policy on post and um, if your pet tends to get riled up around others that you please uh, maybe not bring them out to the trick-or-treating events as uh, little ones will want to touch them and we, we want everybody to have a nice and safe time. Thank you, Arlene, for bringing that up. That's, those are great points. And really, too, we, I, I can also just add, uh, if you're thinking about a question real quick, but just remember we got a lot of wildlife out, too. With this colder weather, you're going to see more raccoons and foxes and deer and you know coyotes and squirrels, everything. Everybody's foraging right now to survive the winter. So they are really, really active. Um, it's great to see, right? We coexist with nature. Uh, it's beautiful. We're a little more beautiful post with a lot of uh, just brilliant uh, creatures. So anyways, uh, just, just keep that in mind too as you're driving or walking around post. All right, I'll pause again. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Um, just to highlight real quick that we do um, have a great um, process going with our movie theaters. Everything is going great. We've got a lot of great participation, but we do want to highlight that we are always looking for volunteers to help. So if anyone is out there that want to help with the, the movie, the movies at our movie theater, for the most part, we play them every two weeks from 1900 to roughly, I think the longest movie we've played so far has been about two hours. So we asked the volunteers for that, and then CYS also needs volunteers for our youth sports and fitness. We need coaches, other officials, referees. We need volunteers at the straight facilities. We need volunteers. So if you have any um, desire to be a volunteer, just reach out to us at 913-684-7525 uh, or 7526. Or you can see the boss UWR advisor as well, but we need to be there to volunteer. Thank you, Sergeant Major. Um, also, don't forget, and I'll, I'll put out another shout for the gyms on post, right? So, River Gym is a 24 7 hour facility. We have now reached the point where it's open to dependents and retirees. Uh, all you need to do if you're interested is you just go to Groover River Gym. Uh, you just request that access ability, and what they'll do, they have two or three liability forms. You'll fill those out. They'll give you a quick crash course on just how to use the equipment, kind of a safety type of uh, brief. Once that's complete, they'll, they can issue you a uh, card. It's a magnetic card, and that'll work for those uh, after hours uh, to get into Groover Gym. So uh, it's really, really a great opportunity uh, for everyone that resides on post. All right, so I don't see any questions at this time. So thank you again for coming out tonight. Um, I, I really, really appreciate also all the support staff and your role in uh, ensuring that we're here to support the community and we can answer questions. We look forward to talking to you again. Next month will be virtual is the plan. We'll go back to the uh, Facebook Live Town Hall uh, forum. So that will be um, about the, the same, I think it's the third Wednesday of November. We'll get that out on social media and announced as well. But thank you so much again for attending and I hope you all have a wonderful evening and a great week ahead. Thank you. Good night.